Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. Today we have a, a rare bottle. It's a Glengarry, written Glengarrioch. Virgin Oak, 48% ABV, and Virgin Oak means uh, this whiskey uh, matured the complete time in a fresh cask made from American white oak. So it's not, not used for bourbon maturation before. No, it's built in the US, toasted, heavily charred, and then brought over to Scotland to mature raw whiskey for the first time in this very active cask. So this is kind of a premiere, um, but there is an comparable whiskey from the same uh, group, company group, uh, the Orntoschen Virgin Oak. It's also called Virgin Oak. Um, let's have a look at the box. Perfect partners. Although American bourbon whiskey must by law be matured in unused virgin oak casks, Scottish distillers have always favored used so-called ex-bourbon barrels, believing that the oak in its virgin state would be too overpowering for a more refined and complex whiskey. Well, think again. Uh, perhaps it was too expensive to have new ones. Little joke. Intrigued by the prospect of matching Glengarry's rich, hearty character with virgin American oak, the distillery laid down a small number of specially created casks. Whatever a small number is, I think this whiskey was rolled out all over the world, so the small number has to be a little bigger than expected. Made from the inner hardwood of 100-year-old oak trees grown in the North American mountains, each barrel has been heavily charred inside to activate the wood's vanilla and oak spices in readiness for the maturing spirit. The result is a match made in heaven. No, <laughs> the angel share went up into heaven. One way ticket. Virgin oak matured. The very first release of Glengarry fully matured in virgin North American white oak cast is unlike anything you have ever tasted. I believe in this. Over time, the maturing spirit has merged with the virgin oak, enriching our hearty malt with vanilla, caramelized wood sugars and oak spices. The result is a velvet explosion of rich artisanal textures and tastes. Tasting notes, a velvet explosion of rich, buttery malt, chocolate and spice. Tangy orange and ginger marmalade melds with trickle syrup and rich chocolate cake leading to a long and warming finish of barley, sugar and spice. Non-chill filtered. Um, I think Glengarry does not say something about coloring its whiskies, but this one I think should be have no color in it or only very, very few, because if you have a look at a bourbon, a typical bourbon whiskey matured for three or four years, then you achieve the same color in the bourbon. So there's no need for Glengarry to add artificial color to this whiskey. Seventeen ninety-seven. 18th century whiskey. No, distillery. <laughs> this whiskey, whiskey will be quite young, I think. Um, because the, the intensity of a young raw whiskey or a young uh, matured whiskey is still there. And this intensity of the distillery character of the brand will match the intense character of the wood. And if you uh, let the whiskey too long in such a new cask, then you will have overwhelming uh, oakiness in the whiskey and the distillery character, the fruitiness and the uh, and uh, the dryness, the citric aromas. 
that will be pushed into the back. So there's a need uh, for a balance in whiskey. And if you have very strong casts, then you should have a comparable short maturation time. And they say nothing on the label how old it is. And law says three years and a day. <sighs> very intense, a burst of aromas. There's a citric aroma, a oranges, juice oranges combined with vanilla and caramel, lots of caramel. And the spiciness of the oak is coming up from the back. There should be a maltiness in it, but for me the vanilla is stronger. The vanilla and caramel influence is stronger than the maltiness. So the cask is really stronger than the raw whiskey itself. Smoother. An ingwer marmalade on your tongue, spiciness prickling on the tip, and from the back, a light, a very light oakiness is coming up, and the fruitiness is becoming stronger, long and warming, becoming sweeter. Very interesting, and typically, a young whiskey always has. A young pot still whiskey. I have to differentiate very clearly here. A young pot still whiskey typically has a metallic note in it. So you can feel something metallic in your mouth. And this might be filtered uh, inside the cask where they have heavily burned the cask so that the uh, that the charcoal layer, the inside of the cask, became very thick. This alligator, alligator layer on the inside, the alligator skin, and this thick charcoal is able to filter a lot out of uh, the whiskey, so that the strong and sharp aromas are filtered away into this charcoal. More fruity, more oranges. A little spiciness and lots of vanilla and caramel. Thank you for watching whiskey.com. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Feel free to share this video with your friends. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up.